With me today is Jim Gilbert, President and CEO of First Point Minerals. First Point is focused on the exploration and development of naturally occurring stainless steel nickel iron alloy deposits worldwide. The company's flagship property, Dakar, is located in central British Columbia and is optioned to Cliff Natural Resources. First Run trades in the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol FPX. Jim, appreciate you being here today and sharing your story. Well, thanks very much, Bob. Well, as a uh, you know, the, the time of year is here to to start evaluating stories, and uh, uh, for for me anyway, and uh, one of the biggest things I always look at, of course, is uh, is what kind of management team um, is in place. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, speak to that team that you've assembled, and uh, if there's any key directors, and, and maybe some of the prior successes you've had. Yeah, sure. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I mean, for for a for a junior uh, exploration, um, hopefully uh, to to become a development company. Um, I think we have a very experienced uh, management and, and uh, board of directors. Uh, myself, I've been uh, involved in, in M&A and financing uh, for 30-plus years. 20-plus 20, 20 years of those have been spent focused on the mining business, uh, and a lot of that time I've spent at uh, Rothschild you know, raising money for some of the large uh, copper projects that were uh, developed in the, in the late 80s through the 90s uh, in Latin America, including uh, Koyawasi Palambras. Um, and Antimina, and a little bit of gold financing uh, for Barrick as well in, in, in Africa and, and Argentina. Um, so I joined First Point with a view towards uh, helping the company evolve from the position it's in today with, with a flagship project, as you mentioned, option to Cliffs, um, and a number of 100% owned projects uh, in the hopper to try to advance those through through joint ventures uh, where First Point takes an increasing uh, interest as we move forward. Um, obviously, we're exploration-driven today, so we're, we're very fortunate to have the two founders of the company still involved. Uh, Dr. Peter Bradshaw is currently our chairman, uh, the former CEO, who, who I uh, stepped into his shoes, uh, and Ron Britton, uh, who is our VP of Exploration. So they're the founders. Um, between the two of them, you know, they're, they're over 80 years of uh, international exploration experience, including uh, for Peter uh, involvement at, at Barringer Research, Placer Dome, and Orvana. Uh, he was involved in discoveries at Porgera, Kidston, uh, and Missima, and Ron. Uh, he, he worked for Homestake, Sumitomo, uh, and Esso Minerals, and he, and he was involved in discoveries uh, apart from Dakar at uh, Frida River, Cucho, and, uh, and SK Creek. So a very experienced, um, you know, sort of exploration and, uh, and, and, and development finance-driven management team um, with a, you know an extremely experienced board, 125 man years of international exploration experience, including uh, Dr. Bradshaw, John Gammon, and John McDonald, uh, and another 110 man years of mining industry, accounting, legal, and corporate development expertise in the form of uh, Bob Watts, who's a CA, Tom Beatty is a uh, former securities lawyer, and Bill McCatton, uh, you may recognize the name of the former co-chairman and CEO of Quadra FNX. So these guys have been around since the founding of the company, uh, and they are helping drive drive the company forward. The project, uh, if, if we're uh, if we're not uh, up to speed or, or familiar with uh, Dakar, please uh, lay out the highlights for us. Yeah, sure. So uh, Dakar is um, it's a new style of, uh, of mineralization in the sense that uh, these are werowite uh, is the name of the mineral. It's a naturally occurring nickel iron alloy. Um, these types of deposits have, uh, until Descartes, not been explored or exploited on a commercial scale. So um, Cliffs had the vision, um, shared the vision with First Point uh, that Descartes could become a world-class uh, project, both in terms of, of scale um, and, and uh, competitive operating costs. Cliffs has sole funded the project now through um, a PEA, uh, and they have um, announced to us that they will exercise their option to uh, to earn up to 65% of the project. They're currently at 60 by sole funding through uh, pre-feasibility study, um, which would be um, completed by sort of third quarter 2015. So from 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 this Descartes, we see as kind of the proof of concept that uh, these t- this style of deposit. Uh, can be developed um, in a in a large scale, low grade, low strip ratio type of open pit mining. It's a massive deposit uh, using conventional magnetic separation and gravity concentration. So a a low risk 
um, cost competitive uh, operating profile. Um, and, you know, there's further optimization to be done in the PFS and BFS, uh, but the PEA was uh, positive and demonstrates at least the potential economic viability of exploiting the, the style of deposit. Uh, and that's the fundamental building block for everything that um, that first point is doing going forward. So we're, we are exclusively exploring for this uh, same style of, of nickel deposit. That's all we're doing, uh, both in Canada and elsewhere around the world. Well, location is uh, certainly a, a, an extremely important part of, uh, of a project, obviously a, a friendly jurisdiction. What uh, what can you say uh, have been your experiences with the Yukon so far? Yeah, the uh, I mean, Dakar is in BC, and, sure. and some of the other uh, operations are, are, are projects that we have uh, in the portfolio are in BC. Um, but we do have a project uh, called Mitch uh, in the Yukon. It's about uh, 50 kilometers uh, southeast of, of Whitehorse, 16 kilometers off the Alaska Highway. Um, you know, we've, we've had good uh, access uh, to the property with no, no issues. Uh, the ability to, to you know, uh, stake, uh, hold, uh, and operate uh, within Yukon from a permitting perspective has been uh, more than satisfactory. Um, and, and at this point, uh, Mitch is actually our primary um, or priority uh, exploration target having the best uh, potential um, from within our within our current portfolio. So that that'll be our focus for uh, 2014. So with that being said, as far as what investors can look for, as far as you know, news flow, um, you know, any any milestones or anything that we need to that we can be looking for here in uh, in 2014, catalyst wise. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we're we're, we're uh, we are looking forward to receiving from Cliffs, you know, uh, a, a, a releasable uh, description of the budget uh, in the program for Descartes uh, for 2014. Um, they've spent um, a little over $20 million on the project so far, so, so we're expecting a fairly uh, significant program. That'll be um, an announcement that we hope uh, will come, you know, sometime in, in the first quarter. Um, beyond that, we do have um, uh, samples of concentrates prepared from from um, a Descartes bulk sample that are in the hands of a, of a number of uh, of potential uh, off takers, users, consumers of the material, um, and we are compiling um, you know both technical and uh, commercial terms, uh, indicative commercial terms type feedback from those parties. Um, we'll we'll hope to put that out because one of the big question marks in the in the PEA um, for Descartes that was published uh, last uh, March um, is revenue. You know, what are you going to get paid for this uh, product, which is basically a new one on the market? No one's using it today. So we have gone out to get some primary feedback uh, from potential customers. Um, that'll be an announcement that that we'll make as soon as we uh, have that put together, and of course. Uh, results from our exploration activities in 2014 on our own properties, including uh, Mitch in the Yukon, and if we're if, if we're able to to um, you know execute our strategy, uh, we hope to have some announcements of potential uh, JVs or partnerships on some of those 100% owned projects. Now, what are your personal thoughts on a uh, long-term nickel uh, fundamentals and pricing? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know. This is, this story, the first point story, is driven uh, by by the long term fundamentals uh, for supply and demand of nickel. I mean, you know, it's it's not just uh, novelty driven to find some new you know style of, of deposit to develop, but really, when you look at the consensus forecasts, there are some major deficits in both mine supply and refined nickel supply uh, that are forecast to to occur in kind of the next. You know, three to five year time frame and grow very rapidly um, to 740,000 tons per annum of mine supply shortfall by around 2025. Okay, so that's a that's a you know very serious deficit. Uh, you know, the other nickel guy out there telling the same story that there's a shortage of projects to meet that kind of demand. The uh, capital cost to build the last you know bulge in, in nickel supply capacity were, were huge. Um, so the appetite out there for you know, building any more of these uh, 
you know, high pressure acid leach uh, facilities for processing uh, laterites is, is, is pretty limited. So we see this style of deposit, a, a, a low tech, low risk, cost competitive, admittedly low grade, but massive long life deposits. We see the long term uh, fundamentals, supply, demand, and of course price, because price will respond to those deficits to try to uh, you know, provide the incentive for new sources of supply to come on. And that's where we see uh, these aware white nickel iron alloy projects fitting in. Jim Gilbert, President and CEO of First Point Minerals, thanks for sharing your story. Thanks very much.